the 24th of February 2022. This date is etched in the memory of every Ukrainian. It was on this day when Russian tanks rolled across the border, aiming not only at the eastern parts, but also at the Ukrainian capital, sparking an instant response from America and Europe. What followed was a show of their unity against the Russian aggression. They imposed sanctions and punished oligarchs close to the Russian president. They shut down communications with Russia, welcomed Ukrainian refugees and armed Kiev to fight Moscow. Throughout 2022, they also went on a diplomatic offensive to ring fence Russia. But nearly 11 months on, is this Western bravado starting to wane? Has war fatigue started to set in? Is the NATO becoming war wary? Or is it now starting to believe that the price of continued escalation might become unacceptable? Or perish the thought, is there some silent calculation that Ukraine's President Zelensky not heeding hints that some compromise should be sought? I ask these questions tonight because the leaders who promised to help Ukraine, who made grand pledges of helping Zelensky for as long as it takes, now seem to be in two minds. I am not the one saying this. Western leaders themselves are saying this. And one of them is this man, the Prime Minister of Poland. He says the West is becoming tired of the Ukraine situation. Exact words spoken. He said this in an interview to a Polish state broadcaster. Let me quote, a few months ago, the discussions were on a different emotional level and the interest was different. The West, the free world, is a little tired and would like to live a normal life. Today, I see this very clearly and I want to warn world leaders because Russia is patient and looks to tighten its grip on Ukraine in the long term. And this statement is both intriguing and rare in its honesty. The question is, what made the Polish Prime Minister say this really? Is there a growing collective fatigue in the West? Or was he referring to someone in particular? We don't know yet, but recently one European country has on multiple occasions admitted that restraint should be the new watchword. I'm talking about Germany. For the last one week now, Germany has repeatedly stressed that it does not want to be drawn further into this war, that it's not in a position to send more tanks to Ukraine. It dropped the first hint on Wednesday. This was at the Davos summit. A reporter asked the German chancellor why his country was hesitant about supplying tanks to Ukraine. Do you know what Olaf Scholz said in response? He put the onus on others the likes of America and France. Let me quote his response for you. We are never doing something just by ourselves, but together with others, especially the US, which are very important in this common task to defend the Ukrainian independence and sovereignty. We are working together with them. We are discussing with them. And barely hours after this statement was made, Shaw's made another remark. This one was even more striking. He said he does not want the war in Ukraine to become a war between Russia and the NATO. And today, the 19th of January, this report emerged. It said Berlin has set conditions for the United States on exports of German tanks to Ukraine. It says it will send the tanks so long as the US agrees to do the same. What is all this about? You see, Ukraine recently asked the West for more heavy ba battle tanks, around 300 of them. It says this will help them regain momentum on the battlefield. Poland and Finland have said that they will be sending Leopard 2 tanks to Kiev. But to do this, they need permission from Germany because these tanks were originally made in Germany. They cannot be re-exported without Berlin's permission. It holds a veto over them. And just why is Berlin refusing to give this permission?
because it thinks it has already done enough to support Ukraine and implies that the others have done far less, especially the United States, given American wealth and military prowess. Germany, for that matter, says America should send its own Abram tanks, which are better equipped for the battlefield. America says that every country should make their own sovereign decisions, decisions that should not be based on what the others are doing. A bitter face-off has followed, and it's unlikely to end anytime soon. Meanwhile, Ukraine says it is running out of time, and they are paying for it with people's lives. This entire episode is tragic to say the least. It only highlights the kind of internal disagreements that have beset the corridors of power in the West. How the West may have succeeded in the compassion test on Ukraine, but it may fail when it comes to dealing with the real challenges. The question is, is there an explanation for the change of mood? Why are these divisions emerging? There are a host of reasons. To start with, this war has been going on for 11 months now. It has turned into a complex and protracted slog with no clear outcome or end in sight. No one will admit it, but the fact is that the West is slowly running out of both weapon stocks and patience. And reason number two, Europe has started getting plagued with multiple crises. At the top is high inflation, leading to strikes and general public discontent. Plus, the Wuhan virus is not going anywhere. And these problems are undermining the West's support to Ukraine. Reason number three, divergent interpretations and views. You see, not every country wants to ostracize Moscow and prohibit trade with Russia. Not every country wants to impose sanctions on Russia. Many of them still need Moscow to meet their needs. And this difference of opinion is now getting starker and wider. The fourth reason is domestic politics, of course. After 11 months of this war, most people in Western nations say they want their leaders to focus more on the internal issues, in issues which they say have been sidelined as a result of this war. A recent poll in the U.S. gives you an idea. It was conducted by YouGov. It asked the American citizens which issue should be Joe Biden's top priority. Inflation received 38% of the votes. Energy crises, 12%. Healthcare, 15%. Racial divide, 8%. And what about the war in Ukraine? Only 8% of the voters said that this should be a priority. And what does that tell you? That not just the Western leaders, but the people have also become wary of the war. They want their governments to focus on their problems and not Ukraine's problems. It is this fatigue that is making military aid to Ukraine a complex task, to say the least. And guess what? This fatigue is precisely what the Russian president is counting on. He hopes that the voters will punish their leaders for worrying about events in Ukraine instead of problems cropping up at home. And here's hoping NATO has sensed this. And he is hoping that NATO has sensed this. And even if it has, will it be able to do anything about it? We have our doubts. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.